In this video, I perform scientific tests on the sleep tracking of the second generation Google Nest Hub. First, I'll test the quality of the sleep tracking against a scientific EEG monitor. Second, I will compare it against the motion detected by an infrared camera. Third, I will check the breathing rate measurements. And finally, I'll compare it against the Fitbit Inspire 2. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Before getting to the tests, let me describe the basic technology behind the sleep tracking of the Google Nest Hub 2. You place the Nest Hub at the side of your bed and it uses what is called the Soli sensor to measure movement, proximity and presence of your body. Soli is a miniature radar that understands human motion and it detects movement and breathing which it uses for the sleep sensing. Each morning you get a sleep summary on your display of how well you slept the night before and this is also synced to Google Fit. Google says that as sleep sensing learns your sleep patterns, the Nest Hub provides personalized insights and tips to improve your sleep. The Nest Hub tracks the sleep of the person closest to the display. Other sensors in the Nest Hub detect sounds like snoring and coughing and environmental factors like light and temperature in the room. Currently the Nest Hub costs about $99. Enough background, let's get to the tests. I will first compare the sleep tracking of the Nest Hub against a scientific EEG device, which I wore for four nights. The EEG device measures brain waves and muscle movements. It's called the Hypnodyne ZMAX and is being used by several of my colleagues in scientific studies. I manually went through the recording of the EEG and scored each part of the night for the different sleep stages. Now, to the results I obtained. Let's first have a look at the patterns over the four individual nights, after which I will do a statistical overview analysis. Here we see the first night I recorded. On top you see the sleep stages as they were recorded using the EEG device. On the horizontal axis we have the time of night and as you can see I went to bed about half an hour after midnight. On the vertical axis you have the different sleep stages, that being deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep and awake. The sleep stages are plotted in the same order that they're usually displayed in research. On the bottom you can see a similar plot, but now for the sleep stages as they were recorded by the Nest Hub. The Nest Hub registers if you're asleep, restless or awake. Now this last category can be subdivided into two parts, awake in bed or if I was out of bed. What I want to see here is if the sleep stages according to the EEG device show any correlations with the sleep stages according to the Nest Hub. I would hope that the deep sleep according to the EEG device is mostly classified as a sleep and that the awake moments are correctly detected. If we first look at deep sleep according to the EEG, which is marked here in purple, we see that deep sleep was indeed all recorded as being asleep and this is a first good sign. Next, if we look at REM sleep, this really seems to be a mix of different sleep stages. However, I would also not know what to expect from REM sleep when it comes to the sleep stages according to the Nest Hub. The Nest Hub did correctly detect the moment I woke up during the night, which is marked here in green. This is the strength of the Nest Hub, since if you actually get out of bed, it should be relatively easy to detect. Detecting the moment I fell asleep and woke up was also rather good for this night. There was a slight delay in detecting the moment I woke up, but otherwise it was good. Now this is the second night I recorded. Again, deep sleep was detected well, at least in the sense that it detected me as being asleep the whole time. REM sleep is again a mix of sleep stages. However, as I said, this is difficult to interpret anyway. The Nest Hub did miss my awake moment, though it did detect it as being restless. Detecting the moment I fell asleep and woke up was not great for this night. There was a slight delay in detecting the moment I fell asleep and it detected me waking up a bit too early. For the last two nights I just want to show you the highlights. Now deep sleep was again nicely overlapping with the sleep. Awake detection was also good for this night as you can see here in green. Detecting the moment I fell asleep and woke up were also good. Now for the last night we see slightly suboptimal performance for deep sleep, but this is the only night where we've seen any issues with this so far. For awake detection we see that for two of the awake moments it detected it as restless periods, and the last period was correctly detected as awake. Finally detecting the moment I fell asleep was quite good, 
but it did detect me waking up slightly too early. So far, the sleep tracking of the Nest Hub seems quite decent. However, let's also look at some overview statistics to get a better rundown of the results. A quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Enough self-promotion, let's get back to the tests. I want to know which sleep stages the Nest Hub predicts for each of the scientific sleep stages. And that's what I displayed here. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the EEG device. And on the left, we have the sleep stages according to the Google Nest Hub. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the actual sleep stages was recorded as each sleep stage by the Nest Hub. First, looking at deep sleep, we indeed see that almost all of my deep sleep was predicted as asleep by the Nest Hub. Also, none of it was predicted as awake or out of bed, which is good. Now most of what was light sleep was predicted as asleep and also a significant part was detected as restless. Only a small part of it was actually detected as being awake. Interestingly, though a large part of the REM sleep was predicted as asleep, REM sleep is also the sleep stage with the largest percentage being predicted as restless. Awake time was indeed correctly detected as awake time for the most part, as you can see here. Overall, the sleep tracking of the Nest Hub does not seem to be too bad. It does not have detailed sleep stage tracking, but deep sleep was almost always detected as asleep. Awake detection was also okay, being mostly detected as awake or restless. The exact time I fell asleep or woke up was sometimes shifted by a few minutes, but it was not totally off. Next, let's see if the sleep detection of the Google Nest Hub is purely based on motion or if it takes into account several factors like breathing rate. To test it, I recorded myself using an infrared camera and I went through the recordings and noted down when I was moving. I want to see if the restless and awake periods according to the Nest Hub overlap with these moments. The results of this analysis are displayed here for the first night. On top, we have the sleep stages according to the Nest Hub and on the bottom, the infrared camera. I classified the infrared camera movements as just moving whilst in bed or actually getting out of bed. As you can see, there might be some overlap between the restless periods of the Google Nest Hub and the infrared camera. However, this is not very clear. There are some moments of overlap, but to me, it does not seem like a clear correlation. The same goes for this second night. We see that the movements according to the infrared camera do not directly translate to restless or awake periods. The same we also see for this third night, where there was also a lot of movements in moments that were classified as being asleep. This is of course not a problem, and probably even good, since during light sleep you can actually move a lot. So this means that the Nest Hub likely uses other factors like breathing rate to estimate the restless periods. However, how accurate can the Nest Hub detect breathing rate? To test that, I will compare its breathing rate against the breathing rate as measured by the Withing Sleep Analyzer. This is a device that you put under your mattress and can therefore at least presumably accurately measure any movements. Let's see if the breathing rate agrees between the Withing Sleep Analyzer and the Google Nest Hub. I measured data with both devices for 12 nights. Here is the first night I recorded. On the horizontal axis is the time of night and on the vertical axis is my breathing rate. In blue, I plotted my breathing rate according to the Withing Sleep Analyzer and in red, my breathing rate according to the Nest Hub. As you can see, these agree pretty well. The Withing Sleep Analyzer seems to detect more extreme values, but overall their patterns agree. And we see the same in the second night here, also for this third night here, and the same basically goes for all nights, where the overall patterns agree between the two devices. However, the Nest Hub has fewer extreme values than the Withing Sleep Analyzer. We can indeed confirm that if we plot the two against each other. On the horizontal axis are the values according to the Nest Hub, and on the vertical axis are the values according to the Withing Sleep Analyzer. We see quite a good correlation between the two, however the Sleep Analyzer has more extreme values. Breathing rate should theoretically be a relatively easy thing to measure for the Withing Sleep Analyzer, since it should get a pretty clear signal. Still, I cannot say for sure that this is an accurate reference device. However, the fact that both the Withing Sleep Analyzer and the Google Nest Hub agree in their general patterns indicate that both of them are at least decent at detecting your breathing rate. I'm pretty impressed, honestly, that a device sitting on your bedside with no contact with your body can measure your breathing rate. 
Finally, since Google also owns Fitbit now, I wanted to see how well the sleep stages of the Fitbit agree with those of the Nest Hub. That is why for five nights I used both the Fitbit Inspire 2 and the Nest Hub. Here we have a similar plot to before, but now with the Fitbit Inspire 2 on top and the Nest Hub is again on the left. Similar to what we saw for the EEG device, most of what was detected as deep sleep by the Inspire 2 was detected as asleep by the Nest Hub. The rest was restless, but this was only about 5%. Light sleep was a combination of mostly asleep and restless, but now with a larger percentage of restless sleep and even some awake time. REM sleep, according to the Inspire 2, is also a combination of mostly asleep and restless sleep, according to the Nest Hub. Finally, for awake, there was some discrepancy between the Inspire 2 and the Nest Hub, where the Fitbit Inspire 2 detected more awake time and only about half of that was classified as awake by the Nest Hub. As I've shown in other videos, Fitbit devices generally have the best sleep tracking out of all the smartwatches I've tested. It's therefore not surprising that the results of the Fitbit are very similar to what I saw for the EEG device. Altogether, this confirms our previous conclusions. Overall, I think the second generation Google Nest Hub actually performs quite well. When I had deep sleep, this was correctly predicted as being asleep. Also, awake moments were generally correctly predicted as awake. The breathing rate also seems to be at least decently tracked by the Google Nest Hub, though if possible, I'd like to do even better tests in the future. However, the Nest Hub does not have the same detailed sleep stage tracking as for instance Fitbit wearables do. Should you buy the Google Nest Hub for its sleep tracking? Well, maybe. It seems to be okay at detecting when you go to bed and also when you wake up. The sleep stages it shows also make some sense and the breathing rate is also okay. So if you want basic sleep tracking, it should work well. A big downside is that sleep sensing is available for free only until next year. After the preview ends, a paid subscription will be required. Also, if you want more detailed sleep tracking, for instance from a watch, I would recommend a Fitbit device. Like the Fitbit Charge 4, Fitbit Sense or the Fitbit Inspire 2 I looked at a few weeks ago. The Withing Sleep Analyzer which you put under your mattress also performs reasonably well. There are a number of limitations to the tests I showed here. First of all, I just tested the Nest Hub on me for a limited number of nights and with no one else in the bed. Additionally, for a proper scientific sleep comparison, I would have to test the Nest Hub against a polysomnography device. I'm actually building one as we speak. Also, it could be that the Nest Hub still needed to learn my sleep patterns, so it might still improve over time. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and you might consider watching some of my other videos. For instance, my video on the Withing Sleep Analyzer.